Okay, perfect. Okay, so you can tell me when I should change the slides and yes. It's Israel. <laughs> okay, thank you, Israel. Yeah, it's a bit complicated, but always I would like to be there, but this is always the complication of the situation. <clears throat> I want to just to, to explain some ideas about this connection between theory of architecture and theory of semiotics of space. This has been my participation uh, in the Institute of Space and Semiotics, uh, led a lot of years by Pierre Pellegrino, and I also uh, was the president of this institution for years. Uh, now, uh, I am glad there are a lot of semioticians here in Barcelona, there is no one. <laughs> <laughs> that knows about the semiotics at the moment. And then I have worked in international level with a lot of different friends from Paris and from uh, a lot of different countries. Then uh, I want to make the bridge very fast. And then my uh, what is more important for me is the questions, because if not in this uh, way of communication, that is um, online, uh, it, it, there is a, a loss of the, the meaning is, is uh, lost all the time. Then, uh, what is the next one? Israel, you can put the next one. The next one is light, yeah. Wait. No, <laughs> there's a B at the, the, yeah, the next one is light. Uh, is okay then um you and of course this is related why this connection now is more easy because of the enormous uh, development of, of neurology uh, with Carl Friston and Erin Kander, for instance uh, about interlocation interlocation i define the semiotics of spy and time in relation to architecture and organism against a complementary of interlocution that would be the verbal semiotics. Then there are a lot of new aspects like these aspects of traces, traces in the brain, traces in history, traces in the documental uh, architecture and, and the space. Now, for instance, in Barcelona, there is uh, a meeting in two weeks of Andy Clark about the city as an exterior document. Uh, and then there are hundreds now of analysis of research of that. This is a field that is making bridge between semiotics as communication and architecture as communication. Uh, next one, I will explain this. This is the, the main scheme of Friston that uh, a lot of times is misunderstood, but this can be applied to everything in neurology. The organism connects with the environment, not just by senses, but by interpretations of the senses. And then each species has a different way to do that. But in men, this is fundamental. Then the or the, the the human being is independent of the environment, but the environment also is independent of the human being. And then this is a dialogue between two independent things, and then the only way to communicate is through interpretation, through hermeneutic meaning. There is no direct uh, way. This is all this scheme is to, to try to prove that. And then they, the neurology can measure that this is working. And then they can find that is schizophrenia, there is depression. This can be written in the brain. It's not now metaphysics. Huh? There are some kind, of course, there's a lot of limitations of that, but they are advancing a lot. Next one. Then, Dilly. Dilly, Bakin and Architecture. Dilly says that the verbal speech are created for the first time in the transmission process of communication. That is, do not exist in this sense a previous code. This is Bakhtin, but he accepted that. That means that 
it's a difficult word for the semiotician, except that verbal communication starts from one unique moment in relation to the history of the humanity in a way. This is a very philosophical thing, but of course, Billy, after make some kind of uh, proposals, how to structure this communication, but he has been very uh, in dialogue with Bakhtin. Uh, however, in the other context, he said, Bakhtin is obsessed by the danger of Russian formalist. But next one, next one. But he says, semiotics is unique in human science that deals with the common roots between them and reveals the centrality of history in relation to the totality of human knowledge, design and history. Then it's, it's a fundamental argument of Billy, and that means that it's possible. No? And then I agree with him that in this case, if this is true, then semiotics is the best tool of criticism. Of course, he converts semiotics not just in the analysis of, of uh, codes, but a way to do a criticism of human culture, especially art, music, and literature, and input and architecture, where the fear period of the mind that Bouldin agreed with this, I call it architectonic theology. Of course, this process is semiotics and also is architectonic theology is in the sense of activity. Then, this criticism, will, this is always daily. This is a network between totality of the past, human and the present knowledge of the future of civilization. But semiotic is not the universal system of this network. That he means semiotics can be basic in criticism. Of course, criticism is not only, only through semiotics, but is very basic semiotics in this case. Next one. Then. Next one, next one. Israel. Yeah, we're having. Yeah, put the next one. Next one. Yeah, the, wait. Okay, yeah. then. No, <laughs> the next slide. Not the, not take out the. That is always difficult. Yeah. Okay, go on. Okay. Okay. We'll put the, the next one. Then just give me a very fast sign. I work a lot with children, and then in children uh, architecture, when they build cities, they uh, follow exactly this uh, line of delay, and we will see with the other, other philosophers. It depends on the social interaction, the communication between the authors, three girls and three boys of D, they communicate, and the communication is uh, expressed in the representation and in the city, in the real city that they imagine. That is connection between social uh, interaction, social communication, and uh, space, interpretation of the city as a way of communication. And you see that is very different in two cases. If there is no social communication in one school, then there is no city, absolutely. The city only is emergence from the social systematic communication. That is very different in each school and very different in each group of children, of children. Uh, of different uh, cities, for instance. I did in a lot of different cities. But just this, this is uh, it's, uh, some kind of psychogenetic process, no? In the PSD and Sunday. Next one. This uh, is going, uh, you see here that this is dialogic connection between subjects and objects, that in this sense is semiotics of uh, space and also semiotics in general. And this is subject and object, there is no interconnection. It's the crossing lines that is fundamental. If there is no crossing lines, they are really, the space is not communicated anything that's here. There is no communication at all. Next one. Then this is, this, if you use uh, artificial intelligence, you found the same. 
Eh, in this case, Hillier uh, space index applied to the models. You see that in this model that there is no in space, there is no space because the accessibility is outside the city. Inside the city, there is no accessibility between people. And here there is accessibility with the center that is completely normal in all the cities. Uh, but not in these cases when there is no city, uh, uh, that happened also in some spaces in Nebraska or in cities that have absolutely no public spaces. Eh? Here there's a lot of public spaces. Uh, this uh, means that the, there's connection, I will see it later, between semiotics, architecture, semiotics space, and also, if you want, you can make here the artificial intelligence, but the, the problem is the same in both cases. You need to understand what is going on here, because if we are, if not, it's wrong for architecture, wrong for artificial intelligence, and wrong for semiotics in general in semiotic space. This one. Then, if you go to the philosophy of time and space, you read Rainer Zimmermann eh, from Berlin now, it's extremely good uh, philosopher of space. Eh? He says the coordination between history of culture, architecture and semiotics could allow the cognitive construction of an evolutive general model of the spatial, spatial human systematization based on active chronotypes. Again, you have here uh, semiotics, you have here in this case, philosophy of time and space uh, of Silverman, and this mathematics also, and Bagdik uh, Grotters. Then, the, the children of social city, this is mine. But this phrase is extremely very similar to Dili, because Dili says almost the same, uh, and also based in relation to Bagdik. That means that the history of culture and the semiotics of Architecture is not only a, a way of a code of communication, uh, in, but is also the analysis of the whole relation of the system of the uh, of evolution of general model of the spatial message. That is the thing that Zimmerman is doing, that you need to analyze how space evolves and then the impact in social interaction that there is no independent social interaction and the systematics of space. Even in mathematics, that can be proof in Gaudí or, or in other kind of, of cognitive uh, connection. Next one. Then you see, uh, we can go on, go on, because it uh, will be too long, this. Uh, go, next one, this one. Then this is more similar to the to go inside the, the hermeneutics. This is the scheme of uh, Paul Ricard hermeneutics, following a lot of things also Gadamer. This part in the right is verbal, and this part of the lie is architecture. Then the idea of Ricard is both are connected by the real communication in a space in a city, uh, the real day by day is in the middle, but can be in some way related to the narrative, verbal narrative, and the chronotop here is a verbal. And, and the architect has a, a third space that is the same level that the writer. Uh, and then uh, Riquet insisted in the last books, especially in the book of memory, that we forgot that this is very important also, that semiotic space is very important for anthropology, very important for philosophy, and very important for general theory of culture in, in history. It's not only important the verbal, also is very important, but the way he said that is forgotten in a lot of, a lot of times, but should be incorporated in the general system of phenomenology of this bed. That is what happened now in a lot of artistic way. But uh, he made this uh, affirmation perhaps 15 years, 30 years ago, and then he died in the 2005, but uh, he made the analysis uh, in 1990 and uh, until 2000, that is the book of, of memory that uh, is the most important last book, uh, there are other books in space. But the idea is this space 
here is metaphorical. The book has no real space. You can change the book and has the same meaning. Huh? That is the specific of uh, uh, that very good, uh, very good condition of verbal communication always that there has no problem. But here there is a problem. Here you cannot change the, the place uh, without changing the, here is time that is metaphorical in architecture. Time is metaphorical, not the space. A space has in some way or other, virtual or real has some kind of, of role that is extremely different of the role in, in the metaphorical way, in the narrative of uh, literary things or in general. Of course, there are a lot of links uh, and there is laws to make the connection and there is the city that is making the connection between the both things. You know? But uh, it's, it's important to see that here something happened that is different and applies to interlocution. Next one. Then you have here all the all the different uh, arts. Of course, you can do the same with architecture, with language, verbal, and then to theater, and you can make that, and then you can make to cinema, opera, virtual reality. There are a lot of possibilities. This is very difficult, these classifications. And also it, it are changing all the time. And now with artificial intelligence, of course, you can put mathematics, geometry, product, and artificial intelligence, you are still in a more complex thing. No? The extremely new ways to communication uh, through uh, different terms of mathematics. Next one. But don't forget the hermeneutic uh, center of intrigue, intelligibility, that very prefiguration of that, that makes with architecture. The idea of Riquet is that the designer is a writer and the, the user is a reader of text, but in this case is reading the city. Uh, of course, this is a metaphorical relation, but helps to understand what is going on in architecture. Now there are a lot of dissertations because the architects need to communicate with the users. If not, they will <laughs> lose completely the possibility to build cities. No, the cities cannot ignore the, the readers. Like a writer cannot ignore the, right, the, the readers because they are, nobody is buying books, but here nobody is going, at the end is living in the cities. What's happened now in Brussels that there is no, no Belgian that lives in Brussels. Everybody is Arabian or is another immigration. Everybody in the professors in the School of Architecture in, in Brussels live outside the city. Eh? go by car outside, but they live in a in a house in the, in the never inside the city. Next one. Then here is just a symbolic uh, uh, analysis of what they are saying. Of course, the subject, brain, mind, education, the subject, architecture, us, uh, usual uh, prefiguration and, and building, uh, the, and the, the, the society and the, in the land, uh, social behavior, the, the, big, the big historical triangle. But architecture is, is making a link inside the history. That is the idea of Superman. And uh, why you can link architecture with the history and with the semiotic rules between people. And then you can have some kind of systematic analysis of culture. This is the thing that now are trying both in semiotics and striking in architecture. Of course, it's very long of, of the of the end of the thing, but it's a starting very nice uh, interpretation of this. Next one. Uh, for, for instance, we have three <laughs> children. Well, now in Barcelona, there is a tremendous increases of mental illness in children and teenagers, but more 100% of, of increasing. Eh? And in France also, and they say, is the is the COVID, is not only the COVID, is the, the, the way of life, is the economy, and is a lot of things, not only the COVID. The COVID uh, and the climate uh, change, uh, it's very important, but it's not only that, it's the whole civilization. No? A lot of illness, eh? while children that they have no social intersubjectivity, and then uh, a lot of them live without the, the father or the mother, or they live 
uh, in without any kind of affection in some way. No? Virtual children, they, they live in the virtual television, they're full in Barcelona, and then they, they don't want to go out of the room. No? They live in the room and they reject to go out and then they need to go to the hospital <laughs> because there is no way to, to take out of the room. It's completely drug addicted of the virtuality. The more and more and more, not only uh, children of 10, 12, and 15, eh? It is not metaphysical, it's a real problem. And of course, a lot of problems of uh, bullying and of control in the schools, because these people that have their pressures or have stress, children, then they are very easy to, to, to be inside process of bullying or, and control uh, mental. All that is increasing in the hospitals. In France, they increase double price of, of the hospitals. They are completely full of, of children and teenagers. And of course, it's not architecture of the city in itself. It's the whole process for that. It is the neurological process between cities and children and education. It's not just uh, a problem of, of physical form or the artistic thing. But the art is, is, is of course, reacting to, to try to invent something between theater, architecture, architecture, and, and uh, artificial intelligence, it, trying to, to invent the maximum thing to escape from that. But we are inside that. <laughs> and it's not that the city is a problem of the city itself. It's a problem of the whole systematics. Psychosocial mental life is destroyed because the Langer tree, Langer tree is the subject that the, the history and the, and the architecture is the three cases studies of urban critical danger indicators because there are a lot of studies, previous studies, especially in the United States, 50 years of studies, how the crossing of children are affected, how the health is affected by the neighborhoods. This is the, nobody there so that. Nobody looks to these numbers that were terrible. <laughs> that they were, the more you have problems of uh, lack of social, lack of physical reality, because the virtual screens has no physical reality. It's virtual. They don't move, and then they cannot walk in outside. Okay? And if you are also inside the virtual, you don't want to have friends. You want not to go to the school. You are in your room alone, and then you lost the friends. This is a chain is what uh, the, the doctors now in Barcelona are very, they don't know how to do, because it's not easy to recover that. You need a lot of, of, of experts to recover the brains when the brains are distorted in this way. It's not easy. Yeah, there are a lot of work. It's not the problem of pills. It's, more, it's therapeutic, but also is social. You need to change the social relation of the subject in relation to the country. Well, uh, next. Then, uh, Miralles make an intent of solution through architecture in a piece of Barcelona that was destroyed in the center of the city. And then they make this, this small housing and this line as the points of view in relation to the whole history. And he asked subject which points of view they wanted which relations they want to the all future, and then he, he has the office here. Well, the city hall does not uh, follow an absolutely these ideas, make the typical block uh, in the streets, but this next one was completely different urban planning. Uh, next one. Was a completely different urban planning. It's a planning that these pieces here don't follow the the typical four four levels in the street and, and five levels. No, it's each piece is completely different and is related to the views of this in relation to the whole, to, to the churches and to the cathedral. And, the, and then through the street and the, the way one is related to the other. Each piece is related to the others by a visuality and is the, the chronotopic relation, voices and points of view. That means that the subject, the real subjects, uh, they build, a, like the children, they, they build a network 
of architectural interactions that works in the space. And then the space is created through these relations. This uh, is a way of uh, utopian urban planning that was built uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the mind, in the imagination. At the end, they built the, the, the typical street. But this was an intent to go out of the unhealthy problems. Because then here you have all the possibilities to increase the health of the users. The children can work in the balcony, can go out, can go in. The children from one building can, can see the children of the other building, etc. This is in the old part of the city that was destroyed and this he uses. This was built, not exactly, but was built the, the marketplace. This is now built. Next one. Now you have the different uh, artificial intelligence. Again, the visibility in the case of the space cities, with visibility. This is by Lewiska uh, in, uh, in Finland, a church, very nice church. And then you see that the machine, because this is the pure mathematics, make the maximum of visibility in this line. And this line is the step, the, the difference between the, the, the auto and the, the frontal part and the visibility. That, there is a connection between visibility of people in a church and the artificial intelligence. No. And then this, in this case, is a completely similar, but the form is very complicated to arrive to that. The, the machine make the analysis of the whole form and the architect in this way make the similar, uh, that is just a fractal mathematical uh, procedure. Next one, we will see that can be different in other cases. Uh, next one. This you have uh, <coughs> the Museum in Colonia by Thumtor. And then here, the, the, the dialogue between the intelligence and the, that will be meant between the semiotics of the machine, between the, the natural semiotics of the architect, and you can make ethnographic analysis and historical analysis. This is a corridor that is built by Subtor over the ruins. This is a ruins in, a, in the museum. Eh? It's full of different ruins. This is, is covering an all all ruins and archaeological site. Then the machine make the, the maximum of visibility in these lines. Of course, no connection with the ruins, but uh, Thuntor was interested. Here you see one room, here another, and the experience uh, or itself also. This is a right experience. This is very like, you know, this is the same. is more for architects. This, and this is much more interesting. And in this case, of course, it's very different. The construction that the, the values of the, of the system, the machine. But this doesn't mean that this is not interesting. It's interesting to see in this form where is the maximum in terms of mathematics, the points that have a maximum of visibility as, an in, as a mathematical relation. This is not a maximum in relation to a point, is the, the whole form, is the machine in relation to the form. But also it's a, it's a date that can help the architects on their way. Of course, Subtor was interested in the experience of the user in relation to the, you can put this, all these, uh, all these ruins in the machine also, but you need to make then an ev evaluation that can be social. And of course, then can make, I have making uh, dissertations in artificial intelligence, and then you can include the evaluation of the people in the statistical, verbal, uh, and of course, then you have a different a different model, but you cannot make everything that is in the head of the of the thumptor because then will be to put the cortical brains in the machine and the cortical maze in the machine are completely different in each person. Then the machine is completely mad, impossible to to assimilate the difference between the brains, and it's unnecessary because the the machine is not prepared to do this work. And the brain is very prepared to this work as in the 
<laughs> in each architect can be a different value, eh? of course. Next one. Then another example is Picasso painting, paints a lot of paintings in, in villages in uh, Catalonia. Immediately, gels through the strain, only, only gels through the strain that bought a lot of Picasso paintings, says these paintings are the Catalan culture in the urban form. It's Catalan culture of urban form. He says immediately to Picasso, no? these paintings are, are not exactly the village, but kept the culture of Catalan urban form, not the culture of the Russian urban form or the culture of the Italian urban form. No, uh, culture. Oh, see, this painting has an historical value. Then, next one. When an architect, Catalan architect, made, made this in the, in the same village, in this case, take the ideas with the painting of Picasso who was living in this village uh, a couple of years, no, no more and different uh, villages, but here completely. Next one. Then what is doing this architect is making some kind of interpretations of the painting in terms of architecture. He's making the translation between the, the, the village. Uh, that means that some kind of semiotic relations are inside here. Of course, the first thing is to understand what is the, the code in the, in the abstract cubistic uh, painting, and then how this, uh, of course, this architect has worked with a lot of architects that are very good in, in Catalan architecture. It's not, it's not uh, an architect now has 80 year old, but when he made that, and he was working a two year old with Coder, uh, with the best, uh, he worked with people that was friend of Picasso and Tapies and all the Miro, etc. He was working with the architects that connect directly with, and this is not a metaphysic connection, it's just a connection of historical artistic connection, what they are saying. It's not just that the architect can be cortically well, has uh, some kind of brain prepared for architecture, is uh, for, for sea space, but also there is a tradition in this case, and there is experience, historical experience, working with architects, that deal architecture and they are directly directed at friends of Picasso, Miró, and Tapies. Uh, this uh, ability uh, to make this translation in this case is not a strange thing, but a lot of people has no idea how to do that, but they don't understand neither the architecture of, of, of the village, they don't know how the abstraction, uh, how this painting uh, takes some thing from this representation of some aspects of the of the village and how these aspects are reproduction here in a, in a building that is in the same place. It's a, a strange connection, but it's a connection that is related to the point of view of uh, Dili and the point of view of uh, Zimmerman. Next one. Then, interlocution, of course, interlocution, architecture, interlocution, verbal. The interlocution space metaphorical and the chronotope shows the space and times of official narrative conveyance between voices and point of view. This is the idea of Martin Dialogics. But the interlocution between bodies and places is metaphorical, but the space is present and specific. And the chronotope shows the space and times of official structures between voices, voices and point of view on architecture and planning. This also is the idea that Bakhtin says that in this case, the users and the voices are no aesthetic, are real, are real users. It's very different the, the, the voices in the narrative verbal that are invented. And here, the architects can invent what they, they want, but the, the users are not inventions of the architect. The users are real, like the readers. No, is the connection is between the author and the reader in the text. Here is the same, and then the thing that the connection in this case is interlocutive connection. That means that I make a lot of analysis with children, and then children that are very uh, together. When you arrive to this point of interlocution, 
they, they don't want to, to, to share things. No, my place, I, my house, no, for you, no. Everything you want, but the place, no. That means that the, the interlocution put into communication a lot of more aspects, some of them in conscious, some of them related to the to the connotations of, of, of the culture, of people, identity, a lot of things. A lot of things that in the schools of architecture I, and schools of children that they put. And in the schools of architecture now, they are no criticism. This is too complicated. Then forget about criticism and make the thing that the professor wants to do. You need to draw this, and this is the way to, to do architecture and point. The, because this becomes extremely critical when the, you have people from different cultures that you need to put together. Architecture here is very clear uh, and can be can be solved the problem, but you need to, to accept the differences, and you need to, to push for a dialogue between different. Uh, then uh, my grandson, two years old, <laughs> my grandson, two years old, asked me, where, where is the fire? Where is the fire? Uh, I was teaching in the fireplace, uh, and he uh, was very serious. He looked at me, has two years and two months, uh, very serious, and says, where is the fire? Then means that the brain can be an extraordinary semiotic process. And this is what the neurologists analyze, analyze it now. And we can arrive to, to see that we make a lot of times architecture and places that are not healthy for people that now is there and for people that is coming. And this, uh, I know, has always been in architecture, but now uh, is so clear that this is extremely uh, fundamental for climatic and for social and for interactive. That is an extraordinary uh, polemic point that, that is very difficult for, for politicians and for professors of the university to accept this situation that is so, uh, so tense between cultures, so tense between uh, people of different uh, sensibility and different uh, political views. It's extremely tense because place is around there and cannot be escaped. Eh? So, the next one, I think that that is almost finished. Then uh, the signs and stresses. Of course, the, in semiotics, but in this case, the traces are not just uh, sounds are not just forms, are an impact in the brain and in the groups extremely different in each group. And then the same space in Barcelona can be very good for Pakistanis, very bad for Arabian, and very good for Catalan, very bad for Castilian, the same space. And this, the, the architect, of course, <laughs> they don't like these things, but this is what happened really. There is no uh, universal uh, breathing of, of the city, but there is the possibility to teach that, to, to make an education uh, and to introduce the space. You introduce the linguistic and mathematics, how no, uh, uh, you can introduce also a space, at least to be sensitive to the different impacts between space and human culture. This is possible. That is not done, absolutely. Only mathematics, only linguistics. The last book of Stanislav Dene, last book, extremely good book in uh, artificial intelligence and neurology and education. A very good book, very scientific, very good. But he it's, uh, has a lot of limitations about the possibility of a culture of, of a space because uh, the culture, the, the, the children should be scientific, should be independent, but the culture is dangerous. Culture can arrive to, to convert people in a, in a, a slave. No? This is difficult, this point. It's difficult to accept that um, you can help people together through architecture. You can use architecture as a way 
to pacify, not to, to the war, not to the war, or the contrary, no? A bit that is happening sometimes. You can help people to dialogue through the space, but then you need to be uh, authentic in some way, and you need to accept the differences, because if not, this is the aggressive. Uh, then this is what the, uh, the scale is said. This is a lot of work to do to see how in this situation the things are going, how this is not, are what are the good and bad uh, indications, uh, and how architects can indicate healthy processes of, of dueling and how not. The last book of, of, of Richard Sennett is, is a book that open a lot of possibilities, but of course is the first time that we have this book that after 75, of saying that the Levy's move forward was completely wrong. Now there is a sociologist that said the Levy's move forward was right, but this is very new. <laughs> then uh, it's, it's a change in the whole scale of evaluation of the theory of architecture. And also it's a way to see the connection between um, semiotics of a space and theory of architecture in the other way and this design, possi new design possibilities. Next one. You see Thuntor, the same building, uh, was destroying the church, was destroying the same building. And you see the, the underground. This is the home. This is the first level. You see the first level. Thuntor leave these pieces, these pieces. Say, it, it, it's a memory traces, historical. Historical memory traces. It's a good pedagogical thing. This has something to do with the old building. But this is the same building that was destroyed in the war. And uh, the, the, the student of architecture now is making an effort to teach to other students how this is real, how this really, this is not only theater, is a real building in, in Cologne uh, about the history of the, the building, is about the history of the city, and then it's a museum. And then the, the users now are connected with the users before and before. And this is made because there is some possibility to organize the, the historical through the, 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 to, the memory can help to, to a good memory uh, can help uh, to see that the, the reality of, of the life now of the users can be related to an interpretation of the history, not for political reasons, but just for political of the space is making the, the, the work. Uh, you don't need to, to talk here a lot. This, of course, is a collage, uh, and they can be used artificial intelligence you want and make all kinds of combinations, but the, the way is, is sensitive, the architect, to, to the importance of these things, uh, and can uh, the, the dialogue between the modernity and the history can be uh, transmitted through the use of the real building today? This is the question. It this, of course, needs architects with the special <coughs> power of semiotic power, not just uh, uh, with an artistic, uh, also to put the art, uh, uh, knowing that is making, helping the social interaction in this way. Next one. And this my line of society, this is Barcelona that make all kinds of connections between education, architecture, and social interaction. That uh, can, a lot of different publications. Uh, in, this is University Politecnica of Catalonia. And uh, each year there is different things and webs. But just to put that, of course, this is a lot of architects and a lot of students that have participated in this analysis of architecture that connects interlocution with interlocution <laughs> and make some kind of possibility of some pedagogy of space that is so difficult to put in the schools, not just artistic, but also social and political. Of course. Thank you very much. Okay. Israel? No. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so now we will have uh, some minutes for uh, questions. I know. 
uh, either from here or from Zoom. So if you are here, you can come uh, to the front. If you are on Zoom, you can just open your microphone. Ah, there is one hand. Uh, okay. Well, it was just clapping. Okay. But uh, we have a question here in the room, so. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, I mean, uh, regarding the role of like communication technologies, I know this was not the main topic of your talk, but no. nevertheless, you rose it because it's such a pressing question yeah. for every discipline. Yeah. And uh, you seem to imply, I mean, you said almost directly that uh, shift to online life and dwelling in the online space, whether in social media or gaming or what have you, Kind of closes down space and this is like a drive because there's because space online is only metaphorical and but people need physical space in order to dwell together and to be interlocutors together and thus and then they pointed to the statistics in in spain and in france about mental illness and so on as if to draw a correlation between this shift to life online uh, and as though to prescriptively maybe to say that a solution could be that well people just need to spend stop spending so much time online and then stop gaming and so on. I was going to press you a little bit on that. Uh, first, to ask you if that was your actual point, like if you're going to make a prescriptive point about people losing touch with space because they're spending too much time online. And second, to point out, I mean, maybe the statistics you're using are a bit selective in this sense, because, I mean, one may also point to statistics of decreasing violence among youth. Yes. Yeah. And that, so maybe project some projection from elders upon the digital natives. Uh, yeah. and I'll, I'll just stop there. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of questions together, but let me say the, the thing that the losing of physical uh, through, the, through the screen, virtual screens, television, mobile, uh, etc. Uh, the, the thing that this drug addiction of that it produces to the people that this is a quantity of time, is not a quantity of people. Everybody that grows in screens more than five hours a day or in children and teenagers, they have problems. Uh, it, it, regardless to architecture, is not necessary in this case, but it's a factor of, of designing the uh, habitat in order to. to for instance, to open the views, to have a, a, a near uh, a possibility to go outside, no, not make uh, departments that is very difficult to go out, and uh, then you have 50 levels, you need the police uh, ask permission to the police to go out, these kind of things, or the, not to have the children alone, completely alone, without any uh, any adult in hours and hours in the school. This is. A problem can came from social, from physical, or from theoretical thing. But the the connection between the the lack of physical thing and a lot of problems can be accidents, can be depression, can be the case of my family that a nephew of of 20, nine years. They it was very good in video, and then and he closed in the room, and he didn't want to go out, and lose the school. He uh, lose weeks of school. He cannot go to the school, and then uh, was a terrible problem for the for the fathers, that are parents, and then myself and my wife said, okay, the solution is not to go to the hospital or to to take away the computer. No, the solution is entering the computer. We will enter in the computer. We will enter in this space, in the screen. And we enter there with email and with direct the connection with the, uh, he was playing military things and things like that. And then we say, we don't like this. We don't like this virtual uh, life that you have now. And then he changes. He changed. No pills. No take away the, the computer. It's a mental thing that is very important in these cases. Then this means that architecture, if change the form to, to not to close, to open balconies, etc. cetera, you know, the, this means different way of construction, it helps this case. This is one, 
one case uh, and a specific uh, part. This, of course, is not the statistics. It's like the toxic. No, this is drug addiction, and the the other drug addictions that now are about isolation or uh, bullying in the school, etc. Also, is is connected very clearly to the computer. But then, the 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 second part of the question is how architecture. Of course, architecture and urban planning in general they cannot make a miracle health system then. The connection is again through the evaluation of the plan, the values that have the plan. And then this, this is a very political and social pro, uh, process. And in Norway it improves and in Spain improves much less. less. When I'm saying the connection between the main, the main uh, functions that you have in a small neighborhood, the bar, the church, the, the, the supermarket, the, the functions, and these functions has an interaction, social interaction, and has a day-by-day -day, uh, use. And this, what they say in technology, this can use in artificial intelligence that I am doing different dissertations about this thing. You can teach in the schools and you can teach to people that wants to buy a, a, a apartment. And I, I know we cannot change the prices, but you can change to select, to choose, to evaluate more one thing and another in function of the, this structure of different uh, links, different chronotopic uh, nuts, in the that this it works and it has been uh, can be shown of course but then people needs to participate in in the plan and in this case in the evaluation of the plan but then in this point you don't need hundreds of hundreds of drawings and hundreds of hundreds of hours. in this good the computer is very good if you want to arrive this you want this dimension you have this proximity you want this kind of building you want for you the bar is very important now you you can in some way you can planify that of course is not the same uh, is not arrived to the general uh, plan and to the style of the of the place exactly, but there are a lot of things that little by little can be uh, teach. But this, this can be teach, and you say, uh, then you make you make the way say that the in the the machine you say and the and the prediction of the of the computer and the artificial intelligence can help to make conscious people the things that they want. They want things they don't know exactly what they want and the, or they okay. don't decide. And this this is positive in this way. Okay. I think I, I think I get your point. I have a response, but I, if, I think we have a question from Tartu and we've moved on because we're running out of time. So yeah, uh, maybe yeah. The, the questioner okay. from Tartu can speak. Okay. okay. Uh, can, any, can everybody hear me? Yes. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, great. Thank you for the interesting presentation. And uh, I noticed like uh, when you were speaking about this architecture and semiotics of space, uh, you were focused on the semiotics of, let's say, culture and humans. But what about biosemiotics? Let's say, uh, how would you describe, uh, how would you uh, say, like, uh, in your opinion, in your, uh, let's say, uh, perspective, the difference between echo field and the semiotics of space. Echo field, yeah. Echo field, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, you see, the, 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 the concept here is uh, intersubject communication. Mm -hmm. Intersubject communication, of course, is echo, but also is a lot of other things that can came from history or come, came from some kind of sharing some values of the future, etc., etc. The 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 difference is that sometimes the echo fields arrive to define some kind of general rules, for instance, in relation to the natural environment, no. Yeah. And then to the, the the social that how like Alvarado says this is very important to analyze the urban planning in relation to nature. Alvarado says this is the half of the problem, yeah, uh, because you solve half, but then there is another half. 
is the connection between people, connection between the doctor and the and the people that help, a connection between the chief of the enterprise and the workers of the enterprise. This intersocial, uh, uh, of course, is natural in some way, but other way is not natural. There is some kind of decisions to do. The, the, the one I want to live, or how this pace that we live is there. This is the, the animals of the natural uh, has not these problems to say how we want to be because they act <laughs> and that's all. The echo has a bit of that sometimes. But the thing is, if the echo, because this has been very nice, the echo is one of the points, the echo field or the echo place uh, has been uh, held by the new Bauhaus. The new Bauhaus European thing make a very big uh, contest of, of places in the sense of echo and also in the sense of health of, and, 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 and uh, in the sense of good materials and technology and all that. And then in Spain, zero. Why? <laughs> say why? Because Spain is not bad in echo. It's not it's as bad as the others. But they put things in Sweden and not money in Spain. And then it was very clear, no money in Spain because in Spain this echo are political. Only political power has the possibility to do this. No way to social participation, no way in absolutely in Spain to give money to the neighborhoods. No, no, the neighborhoods should follow the city hall. The city hall has the money, not the dollars. Then the, the, the European, this is, very, this is very good, that European, mostly German, they say no, in Spain, no money. They don't give money in Spain because the money is going to the city halls, to the university, and to the, to the, the economy centers. That, that is the difference. The echo, it depends the echo. The echo, in a sense, well, who controls the echo? What is the real? I, in some conferences, I say that, and a lot of people say, no, this is no problem. You need money, and that's all. No? Only money, you need money to do research, and forget about all that. Well, yeah, but I don't agree, because if the money is going only through the city halls and through the banks, and then I know that the values are predetermined. The values are already predetermined. The eco field is very good. But you should enter which is the, the power in the coffee. For this, with you put the social interaction, then the power should be clear, really. The semiotic, the, the, the year of delay is the semiotic structure, is historical and is uh, scientific and is artistic. For, for, it's for that that he said, criticism of art, criticism of architecture. The critical thinking and that is they need semiotics. You say oh, you need only ecology and this. No, it's not enough. It's very good. Eh? It's very, it's, I agree with Alvarado. Half of the problem is natural, but half of the problem is not. If you need to solve all in natural, it's fantastic, but it's not true because that is like now they say this building is very good because they put green in the facade. Well, it can be good, it can be very bad. <laughs> It's not true that only green in the facade is good, no? And then the eco field is more than that. It can be uh, a theory of totality of the environment through all the things that, that there are, some kind of sustainability also, no? This, this is good, but if you need just to see if this sustainability, the communication between people really works, eh? or there are vulnerability people, for instance, that is discredited. There are really uh, some kind of healthy social process, then it's very good. It's, and you could say the, the, the Maniaghi the theory of urban planning that I invited a lot of times to Barcelona, and, and I translate the books of Maniaghi in Spanish, and it's extremely good urban planning, much better than the official block uh, planning. Uh, includes the, the land, includes the farms, includes the regional. Of course, I, I am always following Maniagi theory of urban planning before the, the COVID and before the, the, the computer. But now with the computer, all that is becoming more complicated. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you indeed very much. Uh, now we unfortunately ran uh, 
I'm sorry, I cannot even speak anymore. Uh, we unfortunately have uh, uh, ran out of time for more questions. So yeah. we're going to have to uh, call it a night uh, for now. But uh, thank you very much, Professor Montagnola. And, and sorry about all the small technical issues. Well, <laughs> but you yeah. Check. If somebody, if you have the communication, the, the, the email, yeah, the venues. OK. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, for all of you uh, here and in Zoom, uh, I will just remind you that uh, two weeks from today, we will have our second session. So on the 10th of November, uh, we will have the second semi long session. We will begin a bit earlier, uh, also to make it easier on the people in Tartu, that, because for them it's already uh, uh, 10.30, so yeah. and. Uh, so come, because uh, there will be uh, Federico Valentani and uh, one of our uh, Heidi Piva, one of our uh, students in Tartu. So uh, it's going to be a very great session. So, uh, ah, and for us who are, uh, oh, we are here in Olomouc, uh, we're going to drink. Uh, we have an after party. So uh, you should stick and come along. Uh, we are going to... There. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much again. Oh, yeah.